Welcome to Dolores Reads Books. Today's book is The Circus Ship by Chris Van Dusen. I wonder what this book's going to be about. So come on, let's try and give it a good read. The Circus Ship by Chris Van Dusen. Five miles off the coast of Maine and slightly overdue, a circus ship was steaming south in fog as thick as stew. On board were 15 animals who traveled to and fro. The next day it was Boston for another circus show. The captain, Mr. Carrington, was honest and sincere. He thought that they should drop the hook and wait for things to clear. But Mr. Payne, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped up to the helm where Captain Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop! Keep going! I've got a show to do. Just get me down to Boston Town tomorrow, sir, by two. Then came a crash, an awful bash. Things flew into the air. The ship had smashed into a ledge that no one knew was there. The shattered ship began to tip, then sank without a sound. The splashing, thrashing animals swam round and round and round. Look at all those animals. There's a camel, a hippopotamus. What animals do you see on this page? The captain said to Mr. Payne, pray tell, what shall we do? We can't just leave them here to drown. We've got to save them, too. The animals? yelled Mr. Payne. Why, sir, what are you, daft? It's me that you should rescue. Pull me up into the raft. Now ferry me to safety, sir, before I die of cold. But don't question me, barked Mr. Payne. Just do as you are told. Though chilly water all night long, the animals swam on until they reached an island beach just before the dawn. They pulled themselves up on the shore, bedaggled cold and beat, then staggered to the village on weary, wobbly feet. Look at all the animals, they look so tired. Even the zebra and the monkey. And that looks like a giraffe back there. They all look so cold. The people in the neighborhood had just begun to rise. And when they saw those animals, they had to rub their eyes. They thought they saw an elephant, but wait, how could that be? And what's that little monkey doing in the cherry tree? Do you see the monkey right there in the cherry tree? Soon animals were everywhere and into everything. There's an ostrich in the outhouse. There's a hippo in the spring. There's a python in the pantry. There's a lion on the lawn. There's a tiger in the tulips. It went on and on and on. Yeah, there's the, there's the hippo. There's the ostrich. There's the tiger. Look at the python, type of snake. And then there's the lion. Soon there are animals everywhere. 
Mr. Hood was stacking wood and nearly jumped a mile when he found the alligator sleeping on his pile. And Miss Dottie Daly, who grew daisies by the bunch, discovered that the zebra had been eating them for lunch. And Miss Fanny Feeney found, according to the rumors, the silly little circus monkey swinging in her bloomers. What a silly monkey. But everything changed quickly, like the turning of the tide. The night the abbot's shed caught fire with Emma Rose inside. From high above the abbot's farm, the tiger saw the shed. The sight of smoke and fire triggered something in his head. He had jumped through flames a thousand times back in his circus days. So he ran past all the people and he leapt into the blaze. There he goes, jumping into the blaze. And everybody looks scared. Then everybody panicked. Help, help, what can we do? When from the raging fire, something big burst into view. It was the most amazing sight and everybody froze when they saw the tiger saving little Emma Rose. It's the tiger, he's saving the little girl. The tiger's risky rescue changed everybody's mind. The animals weren't bothersome, the animals were kind. And so they lived together, side by side they got along. It didn't seem like anything could possibly go wrong. Then Little Red, the messenger, came running with the word. Apparently a circus ship had sunk from what he'd heard. The animals are from that boat. They swam in from the bay. The greedy owner wants them back. He'll be here any day. So the people called a meeting and they quickly hatched a plan. No animal that came ashore would sail off with that man. Oh, looks like they're in a meeting right there. And there's all the animals making a plan. Uh oh, what do you think's gonna happen now? The next day, at the crack of dawn, a ship was at the pier, and up the lane marched Mr. Payne, whose voice was loud and clear. I am the circus owner. My ship sank in the murk. I've come to find my animals and put them back to work. Doesn't look very nice, does he? He hiked until he came into the center of the town. His face was red. He scratched his head. He stood there with a frown. Mr. Payne looked high and low, but still he couldn't see the 15 circus animals of his menagerie. Menagerie is another word for zoo. He ran around the alleyways. He searched the village square. He even checked a chicken coop. His animals weren't there. Mr. Payne was tuckered out. His heavy chest was heaving. Then Little Red stepped up and said, I think your boat is leaving. He ran off in a fit of rage. His ship was leaving sight. So he jumped into a rowboat and he rowed with all his might. There's the rowboat. It looks really mad too. And from that day, they like to say their lives were free of pain. 
It was a happy, peaceful place upon that isle in Maine. Everyone looks so happy. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification so you will know when we upload new videos. So keep on reading until next time.